mid-April through mid-May love readings. My love readings run from the middle of the month to the middle of the next month because we have these videos here, the career and money readings, as well as your general readings already. And so this kind of keeps you on track as the month goes on. This is for your moon sign. And I know you're like, why? Why not my Venus? Why not my sun? This video right here is gonna tell you exactly why that is. Just trust me, it's gonna resonate more. Um, you'll know why if you watch that video or you know, just trust me, whatever. This month, I'm gonna use a couple different decks and my awesome assistant might kind of edit into the video here what that will, what they look like, okay? And then in the description box below, if you're wondering what that is, there's links there. Um, and if you click on the link and you wanna buy one, I, I'm not selling them, but it's their affiliate links, which is great for me because I have to make money, you know, as well. So hopefully that'll work. Uh, what else? Let's just get started, I guess, then. Um, so the way these love readings work is we're going to look at predictions for singles, couples, and then for those in it's complicated situations. So you might be polyamorous, you might be in an on again, off again relationship. Maybe you're just talking to each other, but you haven't really met yet because of coronavirus. And so you're wondering what that's gonna be like later, you know, when you can see each other, whatever. Um, I'm gonna break it into those three categories and we're gonna look at what the general vibe is this month, what you, um, really want, or at least what you think you want, then what do you actually need? What's going to be the best thing to happen in your love life this month? And then what's the biggest challenge going to be? And then kind of just overall general advice. So let's get started. We're going to start with singles, then move on to couples, and then do, um, for those of you in complicated situations, whether that means you're polyamorous, on again, off again, you're just talking, but it's not committed. Um, we're gonna do those last because sometimes pieces of the single and pieces of the couples will resonate for its complicated situation. So it's not that I love you less, but that's the reason why I do that last. Hey Capricorn. So if you are single, what is your love vibe this month? And they're like, in the near future, actually the right partner might show up for you. And so there is no need to worry except for there is a little bit of a reason to worry for some of you. And that reason is that your heart just might not be in the right place for dating. Like if you're super depressed, this news doesn't apply to you, okay? So you've gotta turn that around if you want this to be your fate and destiny. You know, that in the near future, maybe, um, I guess near is subjective, maybe in the next couple months though, that the right person shows up, they're not going to show up while your energy is kind of empty and sad, okay? So finding ways to sort of raise your vibration daily, even if it's just like watching a comedy special every fucking day, um, will help you to attract love, believe it or not, this month. So. Um, what is it that you think you want? Uh, and it's really not to feel guilty in relationships. I can't remember which other signs had this. I wanna say it was cancer, um, where it was like, I don't want to feel like I um, guilty about kind of asserting what it is that I need as far as time and space to myself goes. And so for you, don't ever feel you know in the quest to meet somebody and getting to know somebody um, in, you know, maybe online dating and having your little chats, you know, during social distancing and doing FaceTimes or phone calls. It's okay to assert your boundaries um, and to be very specific and picky in what it is that you want because you are able to find that, okay? Um, don't feel guilty. like. If don't feel like you need to lower your standards in order to find love or to find someone to love you fully because that's actually not the case. What is it that you actually need? Well, you need to fucking apologize to yourself for this belief system that you've built up that you're not enough or that it's not okay to want the certain things that you want in a partner. It is, it is okay. It's your fear that is convincing you that perhaps you're not going to find something 
um, or find someone that this person out that you want, you know, that has these certain qualities or circumstances doesn't exist or that they wouldn't be into you. Apologize to yourself because that's some bullshit. It is absolutely 100% okay to say this is what I want and this is the only thing that I'm going to accept into my life, you know, and um, so be it. You know, a, a good example is like I have children, but if I were dating, I wouldn't want to date somebody who did. And I know that sounds selfish as fuck, but I don't want to deal with somebody else's kids. Like my kids, I think are pretty perfect, but theirs might not be. And I don't want to deal with that shit. I worked really hard to get mine to be like fucking amazing. Right. Um, that's an extreme example, I guess. But like we all have different things that we desire and require. You know, maybe you want someone to have a certain education level or to be a certain height. It, it doesn't fucking matter. Don't apologize for it. And you don't have to be flexible on that. And don't feel guilty and know that you deserve exactly what you want. OK, so what will be the best thing that will happen in your love life this month? Just because I feel like for most of you, when they said, you know, love is in your near future, meeting that right person, it will happen soon. Um, doesn't necessarily mean this month. It could for some of you, but it's a very subjective and flexible term, which makes sense um, as this is a general reading, whereas in a private reading, they would perhaps be more specific. However, um, this month, the best thing to happen is that you can actually celebrate and have fun. So either you're finding people who are similar to the kind of person that you want, or maybe you do make that connection, or maybe you just have a really good time doing, you know, happy hours by Zoom or something awesome happens to you. So they're saying, you know, this celebration and like happy, good times vibe that's going on, it might not be necessarily uh, occurring in your love life, but it will affect your love life in that it raises your vibration, as I mentioned again in the beginning, um, in order to help you to attract that love in the very near future for yourself, okay? So what is going to be the biggest challenge for you? Um, it's just mostly for those of you like that really have it in your mind that you need to apologize for what it is that you um, have settled to yourself, you know, for what you've settled for in the past, for the mistakes that you've made, um, for not really kind of adhering to the standards that you set for yourself and what it is that you want and believing that you can have it. Um, you know, a, a lot of you kind of have a, even some of you are consciously aware of this, but some of you have a subconscious belief system that says that, you know, you're not good at relationships or you're not good at picking partners or um, you don't really deserve the love that you do. And so it's a good idea to try to work on clearing that. That's the biggest challenge. So how do you do that? And they're like, honestly, it, it sounds sort of um, general, <laughs> but they're just like, make sure you're always putting your first, yourself first. Um, don't worry about other people because the only person who's gonna worry about you right now is you, to be completely honest, okay? What is it that makes my life better? What kind of a partner benefits me? Not how do I benefit other people, okay? Because if you're in a relationship with somebody that um, does benefit your life, you will naturally give to them, you know, the best portions of you because you'll be appreciative. Like that's the give and take and natural energy flow of a healthy and, you know, well-matched relationship. And if that's not the case, then it's just not the right relationship, right? And so, um, they're saying, you know, try to visualize and imagine what happily ever after would look like for you. Not necessarily what your partner looks like. You can, I suppose. But what does that look like? How is it comfortable? How does it make your life better? How is it easy? You know, we want ease in our relationships. Um, so that's what I have for singles. Now moving to couples. Capricorn couples. So your love vibe this month, they're saying it's a little bit messy and they're saying in the near future, things are going to change for you and they will be much more, um, you'll be much more connected to your partner, that you'll feel like your partner has your back a lot more than they had historically. So what is it that you think you want in your current relationship? And it's like, just not to be sad um, and not to be afraid and um, kind of like, not to lose all of the progress that you've made, you know, to continue to sustain 
growth in the relationship and really build on that. And so um, what you actually need is to take a trip though together, which is really, really hard in social distancing times, right? It would do a lot of benefit to you and your partner to have that little getaway or something. However, you can get away to the backyard for a picnic, weather permitting and things like that. Um, it's good for you to maybe take a walk together, um, to see things that are new, to do activities that are new. Um, and so I feel like given the current circumstance, I guess maybe it's different where some of you live, but the majority of us, um, at least here in America, <laughs> are not really allowed to kind of go out right now. Um, so trying new things, but not things that are work, things that are enjoyable. And this could extend to the bedroom. This could just be, you know, playing a new game that you order off Amazon. They're saying, be really honest with yourself as to what might be fun and exciting and not laborious and, you know, super task oriented. And they're like, you don't have to decide this second, not this minute, but like just start thinking about it over the course of the rest of this month and into the first half of next month, because that would be super beneficial for your relationship. Um, what is going to be the best thing that happens in your love life this month? And they're like, actually, a lot of you are just going to kind of feel super lucky in your love situation, even if you're bummed out and kind of depressed and feeling hopeless about certain areas of your life or just in general. A lot of people are kind of going through it and those who already had underlying depression might feel that that's exacerbated. But, um, you know, you are maybe, I guess I can't, this is the trouble with general readings, okay? Not everybody is lucky to have a partner they have. But the majority of you that are watching this video are super lucky to have the partner that you have. And I think that's going to become very apparent to you this month. And I think that it um, is a really good time to make sure that your partner knows, even if things are not 100% ideal, even if you're bummed out, even if you guys are struggling financially or whatever, that you feel super fortunate to have the partner that you do. Because like I said, they really, really do have your back this month. They are 100% supportive of you and what it is that you desire and what it is that you need and they are there for you so long as you're communicating with them what those things are. Um, so the growth that you've done historically is kind of something that really pays off for you now in your relationship during this period of time. So what is going to be the biggest challenge for you in your love life? And they're like, this is totally like coronavirus shit that is going to be the biggest challenge for you. It's almost like they're is this craving to just fully enjoy each other, you know, and almost date each other. And that's difficult, um, especially if you don't live together. Like if you're um, married, but living apart for, you know, a job situation or something like that, or if you're committed and you don't live together yet, or, you know, maybe you do live together, it, it doesn't matter. Point is, it's gonna be a little bit challenging, right? And so new creative ideas, things that you want to try that you haven't before, it's time to do that cheesy shit. Um, it's so, so worth it, but it's not easy um, because there is this just craving to go and, you know, even have a nice candle at dinner, but could you recreate that in a different space in your home? Not necessarily in the kitchen because then it doesn't seem as special. Do it in the living room, do it in your basement, do it in your bedroom, you know, move a little card table somewhere just to try to create a different ambiance so it feels new and different like a date okay so what is the advice for you and they're saying you know let's just change things up a little bit you need a little bit of variety in the way that you deal with each other on a day-to-day -day level and so it's not saying that anything is wrong with your relationship it really does seem like your partner has your back but it's good to keep the relationship fresh and it's very easy to do this in this way and they're saying like you're not crazy to crave you know, a date with your partner. Maybe you really wanna go bowling or something like that, and you can't. Um, but maybe you could create your own little bowling activity in the backyard if you have one, or down the hallway like you did when you were a kid. You know, um, what are those little plastic bowling kits that children play with cost? What, like less than 20 bucks, I'm sure. So order one. It, it sounds silly, it sounds crazy, but you might have a lot of fun, especially if you're, you know, getting wasted while you do it. Um, 
so anyway, that's kind of the guidance. You have it. I mean, you might not be feeling like you have it easy this month because a lot of you are going to kind of have bummed out, you know, Debbie Downer type of feelings just surrounding your circumstances and the situation with coronavirus. Um, however, this is a really strong relationship month for you. So good for you. Uh, those of you in complicated situations, maybe that's polyamorous, on again, off again, it's not Facebook official, whatevs. Uh, your love vibe this month is that you have all the information that you're going to have in this situation about the person, about how they feel, what they think, blah, blah, blah. You don't need to go seeking more. You're not going to get the answers that you seek, okay? You have to make any decisions that you make based on what you already know because more isn't coming. And so they're saying, you know, if you feel like whatever is going on here isn't working for you, um, understand that mistakes are just opportunities to learn. Maybe you put yourself in a situation that you didn't really want to be in and now you're like, oh fuck, you know, this happens where you say, hey, I really want a casual relationship. Then you catch feelings and now you're upset that the other person doesn't want more than a casual relationship, right? Um, and then it's like, ah, well, damn it. Maybe I shouldn't have said that in the beginning. You know, maybe I got to think about what is it that I want potentially, um, not necessarily knowing with who, you know, and being more open or, you know, maybe asserting boundaries so that you can kind of prevent these situations. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be that, but whatever you feel like is failing, whether it's communication or whatevs, point is, it's a growth opportunity, it's not a failure. We will keep making the same mistakes again and again and again until we actually learn the lesson. This is how the universe works. This is how our soul contracts work. It's just life, you know? And so don't get down on yourself. Like we're all imperfect people. Otherwise we wouldn't be interesting, you know? So what is it that you actually need? You need to laugh, okay? You need to look at your fears in life and kind of laugh at them and laugh at yourself a little bit. Like you're taking shit way too serious right now, okay? Especially in this situation here. Like I said, you already have the, all the information you're gonna have. You need to accept that like, even though things aren't perfect, they're either, they're not like a total failure, you're just learning, okay? Take a deep breath and chill the fuck out. So um, what is going to be the best thing that happens in your love life this month? They're like, for those of you that experience endings, you might feel hopeless initially, but actually this is the key to getting what you actually want and desire in the future. If there is something that isn't, that is ending now because you didn't choose that, or um, maybe you decide that you have to end it because I'm not gonna pull the information that I need in order to justify a decision that I'm trying to make, like this is a failure, right? And, I, and I'm choosing to end it because of that it's actually a good thing because you're opening up a window of opportunity for the right situation to occur in the near future. However, if you're not wrapping your head around that, if you're like really focusing on the fact that you feel like, oh, you know, whatever I want, like it's just not for me, like it's never going to work. Um, that's just going to delay the process, right? Que sera, sera. Like what's going to be is going to be. What's meant to happen is going to happen. And so they're like, you know, give to relationships what you can give to the situation you know what you want to and then you're going to get what you put in the effort the love the energy the thought the care you're going to get that back okay if you don't get it back from this particular person or situation right now by ending it you will get it back in a different situation in the future and actually at a greater capacity, okay? So keeping that in mind, it relationships don't fail, okay? Um, it's just like, then they're not meant to be. It Relationships can end and then create space for a new one. And so not all of you are in a situation where relationships are going to entirely end, but maybe a way of doing things, maybe a way of communicating is going to shift and change. Maybe that's going to end and stop, okay? Um, maybe you're in a polyamorous situation and you're gonna decide to you know, end your throuple and just be a couple, 
something is going to shift and change, or maybe you're going to stop being monogamous, right? And it doesn't mean that you failed at whatever you initially intended to do. Things are supposed to change over time. That's how we grow. That's how we learn. Oftentimes, these are opportunities. If we never changed, we would all be in some like real goofball situations right now, right? I would be um, married to Axel Rose, honestly. I think I'm trying to remember back. Six years old, wanted to marry Axel Rose from Guns N' Roses. He's a hot mess. Um, and I think I wanted to be a music video dancer girl. So I would be in some like 90s rock band type videos on the hood of a car, um, married to a drug addict, okay, um, dancing to music that I hate. And I wouldn't even call it dancing, really. I think my intention was to dance, to bring Paula Abdul dance moves to the hood of a car, maybe, you know, whip my hair back and forth or something. But I mean, I'm really glad that's not my reality now. So change is good. Be open to it. New and better comes as a result of letting things go, ending certain things, create, you know, what's the thing? When God closes a door, he opens a window. No, sometimes, how about this? He closes a window and he opens a huge fucking door. He opens the garage door full of treasures in the garage, okay? Love you, Capricorn. I'll see you next month.